Hi, I'm Billy from Sweet Starling and today I'm going to show you how I made this tent cake. Now the video is mainly about the actual tent, so the carving and the icing of the tent cake, but I have dipped into how to make the person and the fire and the vine bits as well, the vine decorations. Now they're really separate videos on their own, those parts, but as I say, I've sort of highlighted them here so you have an insight into how to do those bits if you wanted to decorate your tent in this way. It's quite a girly tent. This is actually for my best friend who's moving to America to do Camp America for the summer. And her mum thought it would be a really nice idea to do a tent. Now she is a girly girl, so that is why I've covered it with pretty flowers and done her peeping out of it. Um, I'm guessing that not everyone will want their tent covered in flowers. So, like I said, mainly the tent. And then if you want to do flowers and stuff like that, there's a sort of dip into it. But I'll do other videos later on and show you how to do that in more detail. I've started my cake with an 8 inch square, a 7 inch square and two 6 inch squares. So I've sort of got a pyramid shape to start with. Now I'm going to stack these together and fill them with buttercream and I've put jam in mine as well. And once they are sandwiched together I'm going to chill them because the next thing I want to do is carve them and it's much much easier to do this on cold cake rather than room temperature cake. So I've put mine in the freezer for about 10 minutes. And then I'll bring it out and use a very long knife to trim away the parts of cake that I don't need. Now I want two sides to come down in an angle and then two sides to be straight down like a tent would be. So I'm just trimming away. Now you'll notice I've got my knife length long ways, so going from the bottom to the top of the cake and I'm slicing along like that. I'm not going um, chopping like you, I suppose like you would bread. I don't know how, I'm not holding my knife horizontally is what I mean and slicing down that way I'm holding it vertically and then chopping along the cake and it's much much easier to get nice cuts doing it that way. If I'm trying to get an angle and I go down with my knife horizontally I'm going to probably tear chunks of cake away rather than take away little bits at a time. So keep working on it until you've got the angle that you want. Now at the top I've used some of the cake I've trimmed away to bring it up a little bit higher. My tent was going to be a bit squat like that. I had planned on if that was the case just using fondant at the top to make um, to make the top section and then icing over it but it just happened that I had cake that was kind of the right shape and with buttercream would all be filled in and would be the right shape so it's worked quite well here. That's pure fluke, I didn't plan that, I was lucky that time. You could also use, um, you could make like a cake pop mixture so with your crumbs just smush them up in some of the buttercream and you could press those on this. It's like a cake truffle at the top of your cake. That would work just as well and you can ice over that. Once it's carved and you've got the rough shape that you want, you can crumb coat your cake. So a layer of buttercream all over the cake and then you want to chill it in the fridge again or the freezer. I've done mine in the freezer for about 10-15 minutes. Then you can bring it out of the freezer and do another crumb coat so it makes a thicker, more solid foundation. I put mine back in the freezer and then when it comes out again I'm going to rub um, shortening all over it so that the fondant sticks. You can use water or shortening or piping jelly, whatever you would prefer to use. So you want to roll out your fondant. I'm using cornflour to stop mine from sticking. And you want to make sure, there are several ways of doing this. One of them, well two ways really. One of them is the panelling method, which I did on my um, social media cube cake. You could cut a section that goes, well, one on, on both of the flat ends, and then a middle section that goes across the top. It would work really, really well for this cake. Now, I was a little bit short on time with this, um, so which is the whole reason I've done it in the all-in-one method. I do think it'd be easier to do it panelling because the corners on this are a bit tricky to ice. But you probably, I mean, if you've had a go at panelling, you've had a go at all in one, and you've had a go at different shapes, you'll have an idea of what you can do. If you want a challenge, go for the all in one. If you want it to be a bit easier, you've got time to be calm about it, do the panelling method. Once you've got your fondant rolled out, you can, if you're doing it all in one like I am, you can lay it over your cake and then pull the excess icing in towards your cake. I always say it, give yourself the room to work with, so pull everything towards the cake, don't stretch it out. Now you'll notice because of the shape and the height of this and also the fondant I'm using is not my favourite brand of fondant, it's just the best colour for this. I took, I had a chunk of ivory and a chunk of a, a brown colour and I mixed those together and it's not my favourite brand. I don't know if you'll be able to see in the video but there is um, 
some slight cracking around the top edge. Don't let that panic you. Get your fondant stuck on and then if you use this part of your hand, so the bit between your thumb and your palm, and you gently just polish over those sort of surface cracks, you will buff them away so you can get rid of them. Just don't panic and don't pull down because if you're going to turn the surface cracks into actual cracks then that's when it starts splitting into cake. So you can buff those away. And it's just a case of lifting all the pleats out, lifting the icing towards the cake and using this part of your hand to smooth everything on there. Once you have got everything smoothed on, you can use your smoothers, your actual smoothers, not the hand smoothers, your plastic smoothers, and go over your cake and buff everything out and then you can pinch the edges as well if you want them sharper. Depends what kind of tent you want, tents are all sorts of shapes all sorts of fabrics, some of them have very soft edges, some of them do have very very sharp edges so it's up to you what sort of shape you want. If you want them sharper you need to use your smoothers to pinch the edges together and then smooth away any ridges that might have been created from you doing the pinching. Now for the next bit I've moved mine onto a pre-iced board that's nice and dry and I'm gonna, as I say, there's someone peeking out of this tent, so I need it to look as if the front of the tent has been open. Now, my fondant has sat overnight by this stage, so I'm not gonna be able to cut into it and peel it back, and I don't really want to do that and expose the cake to the air anyway. So instead, I'm gonna roll out a separate piece of fondant and put it on the front. Now, I have just rolled out a section. I've painted the front of my cake that's already iced with water, and then I've pressed that fondant up against the front of it and I'm using a scalpel to trim away around the edges. If you've got any rough bits, use your finger to buff those away. Now because this first layer of fondant is soft and the one underneath is set, I can go through with a scalpel very gently and cut a line down the front of the cake, peel back my soft fondant and it will leave the hard fondant underneath um, intact so that it seals, it's still sealing the cake and it's keeping it nice and fresh. So I'm just rolling back a gap in the tent so it looks like once once her head is there and her hands there, it will look as if she's sort of opened the tent and it's round her face. It should be quite sweet. It looks horrific at the moment. <laughs> when I was making that, I was thinking, oh my god, it's a really adult tent. <laughs> oh, maybe you had this in there, but anyway, that's why I thought you might see it now. I feel like I'm blushing, sorry. Got <laughs> really hot. I'm gonna calm myself down and I'll carry on. <laughs> Now like I said, it is really a whole separate video for a person with a head peeking out of here, but I will give an overview now. I'm using, I've mixed some um, CMC or you could use Tylo powder, Tylo's powder I think that's what some people call it. But I use CMC and mix it into some fondant and it's a flesh colour. I've used sugar flare, paprika, stroke flesh in the paste. I've mixed that all together and then I've pushed this into a towel sofria mould. I think, I think that's how you pronounce her name, I'll write it below. Um, it, she does amazing moulds, she does um, faces, hair, shoes, arms, hands, everything you can think to do with people. Her modelling is insane, so if you haven't seen it, do have a look. And she does all the moulds to be able to do it really easily. I'm not very good at sculpting faces from scratch. It's one of those things that I need to practice and I want to get good at. But for the time being, Tao Sofira has got my back. She is helping her brother out. So. I've dusted the mould with cornflour, I've dusted my ball of paste with cornflour, pushed it into the mould. Now I want a flat back on this because I want it to press against the tent. If I ha had a 3D head, she's going to sort of be leaning forward out of it as if her whole head's out and it's just going to look a bit strange. So I want it to be flat against the tent. So for that I've used my scalpel and I've trimmed across the back of the mould, which is very, very naughty and you shouldn't do it. Moulds are expensive and if you look after them they will last you forever. If you cut it a little bit with a scalpel it's not going to last forever so I shouldn't have done that. I should have either used my finger and pinched it across or used a small palette knife and cut across that way. A palette knife isn't sharp enough to cut the mould. My scalpel is so it's very bad and it's a bad example and don't do it. Use a palette knife. Either way, get it flat across the back and then you can turn it out and you can add the details. Now I've added some fondant eyes, so the um, white and then the blue are fondant and then I've painted on a black pupil and a white highlight. I've also painted on some eyebrows. For all the painting I'm using um, sugar flare paste colours and the vodka that we use for painting, not partying, the very very strong one. Again, I'll write the name of that below and I've added a little bit of dry dust to the lips. You can do it to the cheeks. I did do it to her cheeks and it didn't like it. It was a bit too rosy. 
So if if you do that with dry dust, if you do that and you decide you don't like it and you think it's ruined, oh my god, what am I gonna do? Use a little bit of water and a clean brush, brush over it, re-dip it in the water so it's clean and then brush over it again, keep doing that. And if you use water, you only want it damp, you don't want it soaking wet. But if you use water, you can keep brushing it away. I only need a few strokes, and then either use um, your very clean finger or a piece of kitchen roll and just very lightly dry it away. You will get rid of dust. You probably can't do it if it's turned into paint, but if it's just dry dust on its own, water is a really good way to lift it off and get rid of it. That's what I've done here. I didn't like her rosy cheeks, so I took them away, and she's definitely she's got nice clean cheeks now. I've used a little bit of royal icing to stick the head in the gap of the tent and she hasn't got any hair at the moment so it does look a bit sort of messy around it but it's going to be filled with big wavy hair she's got lovely blonde kind of blondy brown actually but lovely wavy hair now to do that i've just rolled sausages of icing that are narrower at one end and then i've twisted them a bit to give them a kink and a bit of a wave to them and then i am just sticking them all the way around her head Start at the bottom so you know how long it wants to be and then just work your way up and then you need to fill in the gap above the head and then work around the front so you're sort of framing the face. Once the hair is done, I've done two little hands which are really just a ball of icing cut in half and then some finger marks and indented in them so it looks like she's got hold of that tank underneath her chin. It's just quite cute I think, it's like she's wrapped it around her. Looks like she's actually peeking out rather than she's just the head in the tent. <laughs> now this is a very girly tent. There are flowers all over it. Now these are their pre-made sugar flowers. They're ones that I have in a box ready to go when I need them. They're just flower paste and then um, flower cutters. Now I can do a video on that one day if, if you would like that. Just let me know if you would like that and I'll do that on all different flowers. Now the green is royal icing again, um, coloured with mint green. And then I've got two piping nozzles. One is a PME number two, and the other one is a PME ST52, which is a leaf nozzle. Amazing, I love leaf, leaf nozzles. They're so easy and they look really, really good. So I've just piped vines everywhere, added the leaves, and then stuck the flowers in so that for icing, and it does, it just really girlies it up. The little log fire is probably actually the favorite part of this cake for me, which is tragic, isn't it? <laughs> So to make the log fire, you want to roll small sausages of brown. I've never built a fire before, so I just stack sticks up and sort of winged it. You probably have a better idea of how to build a fire, but anyway, it looks okay. So I've just laid brown sticks on top of each other and then sort of laid them around the fire. Then I've used more royal icing and I coloured it with a bit of yellow and a bit of orange and just left it marbly. And then used a small pad knife just to patch in the icing so it looked like flames coming through the sticks. I think it worked really well actually. Very pleased with my fire. That's how I made this tank cake. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and click the subscribe button. There'll be new videos every Monday. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!